Hi and welcome back. So in this video we are going to talk about R, N, and do an overview of set notation. In the context of linear algebra, this is just important because in linear algebra we start to do some more theoretical math, and we're going to be using more formal math notation sometimes, so I want to make sure that we understand what all the symbols mean. So some of this may be review for you, and that's fine, we're just going to go over it so that we're all in the same place. So in general, when we write R, this is like a math R, so it has this double line. This represents the set of real numbers. I like to think of this as a number line. We could label it with like negative three through three, just to represent that we're looking at a certain part of the number line, but we understand that this includes all real numbers. So this also includes things like negative one half, E or pi, or you could think of 0.9 repeating. All of these are real numbers. So real numbers are everything that aren't complex or imaginary numbers. So real numbers are basically what we work with most of the time. Then we can start thinking of R2. So we put the two in the exponent position on this R, and this starts to represent two dimensions. So instead of just having the real numbers on one number line, we add a second one. And so this would be like when we're used to looking at an x, y plane. So again, we would label it sometimes just to know which part we're looking at, but we understand that this represents all the real numbers, not just the ones listed here, it includes all the ones in between the numbers we've listed as well. Then we can add another dimension and look at R3. So now we have three dimensions. We take those two axes and lay them down flat and we add a third vertical axis that sort of is the height so now we have x, y, and z axes. That's just our usual way of referring to them. So you can imagine that we can continue adding more dimensions, as many as we want, really. And that would be R, n, where we have n dimensions. So this would be variables x1, x2, x3, all the way through x, n. So of course, these are much harder to visualize. We can do one through three dimensions. We can visualize those a little better. But when we get to n dimensions, that's of course more difficult to visualize, and so we're starting to talk about this more abstractly. The important thing to note here is that Rn just refers to n dimensions, and we usually label them all with x's just to keep things easier. So this is about R and Rn, but we have some other often used mathematical sets that is just worth reviewing here. So you might see z for the integers, and so you can think of these as just the integer values, so just negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. in both directions. Or we can take just the positive integers, we denote that with a plus sign, and so this would be all the integers starting at 0 and getting larger. Then we have the natural numbers. These are the same except without zero. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. These are sort of our whole numbers. Then aside from our integers and natural numbers, we also have complex numbers. So complex numbers are what the real numbers are not. So they're imaginary, they're of the form a plus bi. So things like the square root of negative one is a complex number. i represents an imaginary number. So that would be a C with that double line. And then another one that shows up pretty frequently is Q for the rational numbers. So the Q goes for quotient, so rational numbers represent quotients. These are of the form P divided by Q, where P and Q are integers, they're in Z, and Q would be non-zero, so you can't divide it by zero. So rational numbers would be everything that can be written as a fraction or as a quotient in this way, and the opposite of a rational number would be an irrational number, meaning that it can't be written in this way. So these are some of the math symbols, the ways we denote these specific types of mathematical sets. Then the last thing I want to mention here is that we have some set notation, just some more symbols that we use to keep track of sets. So the first thing is that we use these curly braces, or you call them curly brackets, and we use those to contain items in a set. So anytime you see those, we're usually listing out items in a set. Then we have this E looking symbol. This is the in symbol that we use mathematically, and this is to say that an item is part of a set. 
So rather than writing out a bunch of words, like this item is in this set, we use the in symbol to indicate that the item is in the set. I actually used it just a moment ago without even realizing when I was talking about rational numbers. Then the last one is a vertical bar. It doesn't look like much, but the main idea is that it's used when we're talking about set notation to separate the items from the conditions. So you'll see that in a moment. Let me show you some examples of what this looks like. So let's say we have the set X in R such that X is less than three. And so how I would read that is similar to what I just did. We have the set of X in the real numbers such that X is less than three. On the left hand side are the items. So that's the X in R. That's the items in the set we're looking at. And then the X is less than three is the conditions that correspond to those items. So in this example, we'd be looking at any real number less than three. And this is just the mathematical way to write that. A potentially more complicated example might look something like the set of vectors V, which are equal to X, Y that are in R2, such that the Y component is even, it's an even number. So again, we put the items on the left hand side and then we put the condition corresponding to those items on the right. So we're looking at all the vectors in R2 such that they have a second component that's even. And so it's just good to get a little bit of practice and fluency with this set notation. It's maybe something you've seen before, but we're gonna start using it more regularly as we start working more with vectors as part of linear algebra. Okay, so that is an overview of Rn. We talked about some more common mathematical sets and did a little overview of set notation. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.